In this video, we're going to prepare to start looking at getting and setting form values with JavaScript. Before we get started with the DOM and JavaScript portion of things though, let's take some time to talk about the HTML side of forms. Let's start by looking at the front end of a form and some of the common options that we will see. What we have here is a form, and then we have a field set with a legend. We have an input field, select field, message, some radio buttons here, some specific types of input fields like an email, phone, date ones. So if we drop down on this, the different browsers are going to do a lot of work for us. Of course, this is JavaScript in the background, but not JavaScript that we have to write. We have the same thing for filling out some time options, things like this. And then the combination of the two of these, date and time. We have some radio sliders. We have the ability to upload images. Then we have a couple different ways of doing fields that cannot be edited, followed by the um, ever popular checkbox here. We also have a reset field, which I've styled a little bit, but the, the functionality is native. So that if we were to come down here and click reset, you would see that reset and all that information is gone. And then a submit button, which is going to submit everything. Of course, I have a uh, required field here, so it won't work unless we, we fill that out, but that will submit it. And then down here, I wanna point out that we actually have a second form because having multiple forms on one page is something you do have to consider when working with JavaScript. And it does bring up some potential issues as well as open some doors for things. So that's the front end of our form here. It's pretty simple stuff you should have seen before, but now let's take some time to look at the HTML that builds this form on the back end. Okay, so here is the back end of our form. We could still see our form over here on the side, which will be helpful. And I wanna come down to the first element, which is the form element. No form is going to work without a form element. However, that's not to say with JavaScript that we can't do some things with fields, input fields and the like without the form. But if we really want to submit our form, then we need to have this form element. Now the first attribute that you're gonna see, again, these are attributes, is going to be the action. Now typically when you're working outside of WordPress, action will link to an actual file. Let's say that we had a file called process form and we were working with PHP, we would link to that form. Then in that PHP, which we're not really going to get into at this point, it would process our form for us. Now, when you're working with WordPress specifically, there are generally two options that you're going to enter in here. One is that you could have your own custom PHP form in your theme or in your plugin, and you would have to put the link to that here. So there are a few ways to do that we're, that we're not really going to get into because um, they're not so relevant at this point, but you could have your own custom one. The other option is to link to the admin post.php file, which will help you process your form in something like your functions.php file. You wouldn't really hard code it this way. And in the notes, I have a link to an article that will help you understand these two things better. Again, they're a little bit out of scope at this point, but I suggest that you click and read about the action. Now for our purposes, we're going to leave action blank, which just means that when we submit our form, nothing on the server end is going to happen. Now that's fine because we're going to be doing everything on the front end with JavaScript at this point, but it is very unlikely that you would ever just do something with JavaScript without having some sort of server fallback or server um, connection there to do something. However, that's just to point out the action again, not as relevant for what we're going to get into, but important to know about. So the next one we have is our method attribute. And this is really important. We have two options. We have get, which it's set to now, and we have post. And I'll just demo real quick the difference. If we come back to our file. Okay, I'm gonna fill this out, put in my email here, and then hit submit. Now I'll make this full screen for a moment and look what happened up top here. All of the different form elements that we have are listed here by their name attribute, which we'll look at later, as well as the value that was entered. Now with a typical form, you would not do it this way. However, there are some cases where you might want to use get 
And the first one is something like a search engine query. When they fill out the form, you want that information to be in the URL so that they can come back, bookmark it later, or just so that you can pull that easily into your page. And the other option is when you're testing. So in this case, when we're playing around with forms and we want to easily figure out what information was submitted, we could use the get method here. Quite helpful in that regard. However, with your average form, you're not going to want to use the get method. And the reason is, is because all of this information is displayed publicly, which you may not want. For that reason, most forms are going to use post, and this is going to push everything to the back end and hide it from appearing. So again, I'll just fill out my email. That's my required field we'll look at later. Hit submit. It's still there because I didn't clear the page. Okay, I'm gonna start with the page here, put in my email, hit submit, and notice nothing is up here in the URL. So most of the time you're going to use post. But while we're testing, I find it helpful to use get. So these two, action and method, are very important for forms, not necessarily completely relevant to JavaScript. We could still do the same stuff with JavaScript, but it's important to know about these aspects. The other two ones are optional, ID and name. And ID can be helpful just so that you could easily grab your form using something like get element by ID. And name can be helpful for the same reason. We haven't looked at get elements by name, but this is also possible. The other benefit of having name versus having ID is that ID will just be for reference for us on the front end and using our JavaScript. However, name will actually be submitted along with the form, so it could be helpful for us if we wanted to give our form a name that we could then access later. For example, to tell which form had been submitted. Now I'm going to skip over this input field here set to type hidden and we'll come back and look at that later. I want to come down first and talk about field sets. Real briefly, field sets are meant to break your form up into different sections. So we have here a field set for contact information, field set for additional information. You might do something like personal information, billing information, field sets, just logical ways to break up your form. They're not required, but they are part of the DOM. And so if we have them in our forms, we have to be aware that that's going to be part of the DOM of the form. Then we have the legends, which is simply this here. They're automatically styled in most browsers to kind of look like this. We've added some extra padding and styling here for this one. But if you are going to use a field set, it's important that you use a legend along with it both for usability as well as accessibility. Now let's come down and look at the inside of our form here and we're gonna begin seeing our first elements. And the first thing is that we want to always have a label. The label is tied to a form field by the for attribute. So the for attribute here has to match an ID attribute in the field. So you'll notice in our field here, we don't have an ID. So in order for this to work, we would have to go in and add full name. And once we do that, this label is automatically synced to know for both accessibility and usability purposes that these two are connected. So the nice thing here is that if I refresh this and I were to come and click on the label, it will automatically pop the cursor down into that field. For accessibility purposes, if you're using something to read through, it will tell you, hey, this is the label for this input area here. Now, I've done something a little bit unique here, which is I've used an abbreviation for just the N here. And we'll talk about that in a minute when we come down into access keys. But this doesn't really have to do with the label so much. It's more with one of the other attributes. So now we come down into our input field. Input fields are probably one of the most common types of fields you're using. So if you're new to working with forms, you'll definitely see a lot of them. And if you've worked with forms, this is second nature to you. However, the interesting thing about input fields is there isn't just one kind. There are many different types. So the type attribute is very important because it will completely change how an input field functions. So let's take a moment to look at the various types of input fields we have. 